joining me. Um, sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. I went to log on this morning after turning my computer off last night and it decided to do some of those pesky updates or at least something like that. It was very, very slow, which was very, very annoying because I was all ready to go. But I'm just checking my volume. Yeah, that's fine. Um, could be time for a new laptop. I'm waiting for my tax return at the moment, hoping to have use it as a craft fund, but uh, it looks like it's going to end up being a new laptop fund after all. But that's okay. That's fine. Nice new a fast laptop would be very, very nice. I see we've got a few people jumping on. It's great to see you. Another update popping up on the computer. I'll put that off. Oh, dear. thought I'd finished with technology problems way back when, but anyway, all good. Um, today I'm going to use the Tree Lot dies, which is this little die set here. Um, I won't open it up because I've just thrown everything back into the envelope and they're absolutely everywhere. But lovely little um, uh, die set that is actually a freebie with celebration, the July to August celebration. Um, it's free with a $180 Australian purchase. There it is there. Lots of great little dies and it actually corresponds with the um, tree lot uh, trees for sale um, stamp set which is in the um, the new mini catalogue so that's the die set I'm going to use today it's really a good one I found this morning or for getting this card ready because you've got um, those six little dies along the bottom there so there's uh, two dies per Christmas tree because obviously it's a stamp set about Christmas trees you've got an outline one and a detail one and you've actually got three complete trees there which is great for this one because I wanted six trees, so I only had to run it through the die cutting machine uh, twice in all, which was really good. So I'm using that one. I may need a wee bit of um, uh, explanation if we've got any American friends popping on at any stage um, during the morning. I know I've got a lady. Someone's just come on from Florida. Oh, Roz has come on from Florida and Florida and. And Yvette from Alaska, that's great. I need some explanation as to why the there's necessarily a little caravan. I know you guys would call it a trailer, but um, there's why is there a little caravan with the trees? Is that just because, or is it something particular to do with um, tree lots? You know, the the areas where people sell Christmas trees. Do they necessarily have a caravan or trailer on site as well. Um, I've popped this one together as sort of a camping theme because that's basically what we would do here in Australia with our caravan. We'd pop it in a forest somewhere and have a camp with our dog. So that's what um, I'm doing. That's the theme I'm doing here for this one. So putting an Aussie theme, an Aussie slant on it, probably an American um, uh, design. Although, as I said to my husband, I don't know of anyone who would actually camp in, a, well, in a Tasmania anyway. I don't know of anyone who would camp in a in a spruce or pine tree plantation like that because they're generally fairly dead of anything else because um, they're plantations for for houses and and that sort of thing. But anyway, we're going to a little bit of poetic license. We've got somebody camping in a in a pine plantation, maybe. Anyway, so these are the dies I'm using. The tree lot dies, that's where I'm getting my trees and my caravan. Oh, I think my a little bit fuzzy there. Just let me get give my camera a clean. And I'll let that focus again because I'm up too close and it's having trouble. And I'm also using um, the all that dies. That's what I'm using for my sentiment box. As I mentioned previously, an awesome, absolutely awesome um, die set if you're searching for new sentiment boxes. Let me just hang five for a second. There you are. It's focused again. We've got some explanations. When we camp, we are usually in an area with lots of trees. Yes, Kathy, we usually are. Um, probably here in Tassie, they wouldn't be pine trees. They'd be um, they'd be gum trees. Anyway, people use those campers to go camping in the woods. That's the only reason I can think of as they'd be surrounded by trees. There's lots of campers and woods in Michigan. Excellent. Well, I have my explanation. It's not necessarily where 
tree sellers hang out it's just for the camping aspect which is great cool so there we go so this is the card i'm going to make it's a little um, pop-up box as you can see it sits up like that when i'm showing it to you it sits up like that when it's on display and it folds flat um, this way she says trying to work out which way it folds flat folds flat this way so you'd actually need for this particular size you will need a six inch square envelope to pop that one in so I'll let you know I'm going to cut the the box itself for you and I'll show you how to do it um, cool all right so let's get started so what I'm starting with and I'm going to for the box cards the cutting and scoring is the important bit so I'm going to show you how to do that bit I have a five and a half inch by ten and a half inch piece and a bit hard to tell in this light but this is actually early espresso cardstock so five and a half by ten and a half what I'm going to do is grab my trimmer I'll push it up enough for you to actually see and I'm going to score the sort of edges of my box the, the corners of my box first one I'm going to score is at half an inch so half an inch basically is just a little tab that I'm going to use to glue the whole thing oh that's all right don't get your trimmer and your scorer blade mixed up girls that's what I can tell you so that's half an inch scored it doesn't matter that I've cut a wee bit at the top there because I'm going to cut that in anyway then I'm going to start this is going to be a three and a half inch wide card at its longest point so I'm going to take my score along to four which means the gap is three and a half making sure I get my scoring blade involved then um, it's going to be one and a half inches deep so we're going to go to uh, from four to five and a half and don't worry I'll pop all these measurements into the um, into the comments but I'm just sort of trying to show you how you can work these things out yourself as you go so we've got three and a half one and a half so we need another three and a half so that would put us at six that will put us at nine so from five and a half through to nine <coughs> excuse me and then if I've cut that right that last little panel there should be an inch and a half which it is okay so we've got half an inch is our tab at the end for gluing then the width we require is three and a half so that's uh, at uh, another three and a half inches along another inch and a half along another three and a half that's formed near the back and then the other side is that inch and a half there then what I'm going to do is I want this one to have it's going to be slightly lopsided I actually want it to be I actually want it to be two inches uh, yeah two and a half inches here and three inches there so I want it to actually be a little bit taller at the top than it is at the bottom I just think I like those proportions a bit just to have more height at the top so I'm actually going to score it at two and a half so that leaves the two and a half for the base of the box and the three inches where we can actually do our our um <clears throat> our decorating so what I'm going to do is where I've started cutting that line I'm going to continue cutting it down so this is cutting it on the three and a half to so the three inch segment I'm going to cut that down to the score line just like that and I'm going to cut that out once we finished our cutting and I'm just going to continue cutting all of those score lines on the three inch side down to the central score if that makes sense and that makes our little box opening tabs you usually make I made a lot of these cards in my time so I can usually guesstimate you know, the dimensions I'm going to need I used to make a lot of them when I had my Etsy store people would give me weird and wonderful combinations of how to um, how to uh, you know personalize the card I did uh, weird and wonderful things I had one I remember now the lady the the she was ma I was making it for someone who liked oh, what was it um, cartoons pizza and nike shoes so i had to somehow get the pizza gaming and nike shoes into this card so i made a box obviously and popped all sort of things that represented all those things onto it for her so they're quite fun and you can um you can put as much of your um imagination into them as you possibly can 
the problem is when you're selling them on Etsy, people expect, um, you know, 20 hours work on a card for they we don't want to pay more than six bucks or something. So, you know, it tends to be a bit of a labour of love rather than a profit, unfortunately. And strangely, they people would often wonder why um, it would take so long to do and to reach them until I'd explain to them that I'm in Australia at the other end of the world and at the bottom end of Australia with that. Okay, so we've I've, I've used that little tab that we've left for our glue and uh, I've formed our little box there. Now, a bit of explanation. When I'm making the these particular cards, I tend to use a glue stick. That's just from my... Uh, my experimentation over the years that the glue stick is really good for you know being able to move it around and stuff our glue is wonderful the stamping up glue is wonderful but it's just uh, it takes a wee bit too long to dry and you have to sit there holding your card for a bit too long so I'm just going to fold three of the four tabs down and there we are, have our box that we can start decorating there we go. So, yeah, so there we go. So we can get that. So the back part I'm going to leave up because that's what we're going to sort of, that's like our stage back where we can sort of put the, the decorations on the back. And then I'm just going to pop some paper on those front forward flaps. And then you can see it folds square like that. Okay, so let's get going with the fun bit. We've got the mechanics done. Okay, so I've already cut the paper. So when you decide on the size you want for your box card, you obviously have to scale down a wee bit for the paper layers that you're going to use. Um, I'll just explain. This is, we decided is a three and a half inch wide card with a three inch depth. So I've cut myself a piece of cardstock that's probably an eighth of an inch smaller than that to pop on the front. And on the sides, we decided it was an inch and a half wide, again by three, and I've cut a couple of pieces slightly smaller to pop in there. So I might as well add those now. I'm going to go back to our glue as much because I really love it for layering and all those sorts of things. It's just that initial tab that I like the glue stick because it's uh, it clings straight away and still has a bit of movement for that all important practice fold. Okay, so there we are. So I'm going to pop our little strips of paper everywhere. Now this paper is actually bizarrely almost from the Bows of Holly designer series paper, which is new in the July December mini catalog. Um, also part of the paper share. If you'd like to jump on and grab a paper share or the details of the paper share, great way to try before you buy and see all the great papers without having to necessarily buy full packs. So I am doing another paper order over the next couple of well, next week or so if you'd like to jump on board with that. Um, yeah, so it's the other side of, I'll show you the other side, it's just sort of a greeny splodgy pattern, but it's really nice and, and I looked at it and thought, wow, that's pretty much the pine trees that I'm going for um, with this design. So, so there we are. So I have our three of our tabs um, decorated. I've got the same size here and that's going to be on the back of our little stage. It's almost like a little theatre, isn't it? There we are. Now, personal message on these cards, I would always pop, it's like revisiting an old friend making this, um, I would always pop a blank panel, so cut it the full size of the back and pop it, a white panel on the back for people to pop their personal message on because honestly there's no... I saw someone write on the front here once. It happened to be a panel light enough or a paper light enough to um, to write on and uh, it almost broke my heart. So, um, yes, yeah, so I tend to put the panel on the back for decorating. Okay, so there's basically our box is decorated there with the paper. So now we need somewhere to um, pop our wonderful little decorations and trees and caravans and things and you can see when I put it like that that there's two little brackets there so that's what we're going to do um, we're going to make now so given that we've said it's a three and a half inch wide card 
I've got two pieces again of um, uh, e uh, evening evergreen and they are four and a half inches long and probably about an inch and a half high. It doesn't really matter too much. And all I'm going to do, because they're an inch longer than the card is wide, I'm just going to score them, making sure my score, inch, each of them, um, half an inch from the end. So once that folds over, what's left in the middle there is three and a half inches. Okay, so let's do that. Anyone who's friends with me on Facebook would see that my husband bought himself an e-bike yesterday. He's been saving for it for so long and he was starting to get so painful. I couldn't go to the bank. It was starting to get painful. He was getting painful in, the, in this respect because every time I'd go to the bank, he'd go, make sure you don't take out my money that I've been saving in the bank for my e-bike. And I'd go, yes, of course, I remember. And I don't know how quite how he was managing to save it because he wasn't actually um, economising in any way. So somehow he was managing to save this money and still do all the things that he would normally do. But anyway, so I finally said, look, for goodness sake, use your tax return, go and get the e-bike and then at least I know what's in the bank account and what I can actually use. So he got his e-bike yesterday and he's taken it off to work with him today. Um, it's about two degrees outside, yeah, about two degrees outside at the moment and I think he was just about ready to say, nah, I'm going to take the car. But I think he thought that I was probably going to say, you know, you've just spent all this money on your e-bike, why aren't you using it? So he, he took it anyway. So yeah, he's probably absolutely freezing by the time he gets to work. Okay, so this is the little caravan or little trailer from the dies. I've already cut it. Um, uh, out for you so you don't have to sit here and watch me cutting die cutting which is proving to be a bit painful these days it comes in two with two dies basically the one is the main body of the caravan and it's little wheel and it's little um you know pulley thing um and that's i've done in cherry cobbler and then you get a second die to do the um the detail this um in broth and but embossed detail here top and bottom and I've done that in um, smoky slate so there we are we've also got a little and I'll go really close you can see it a little wreath there so I thought I was try and give it a sort of Christmas theme so these people are obviously off camping at Christmas time uh, and they've given the little wreath there the wreath is a combination of the cherry cobbler and the evening evergreen okay so the caravan's got windows in it obviously holes through so I didn't want to pop it up and have it completely see-through that was a bit weird so I thought I would um, backfill those windows with just a little strip of um, daffodil delight so it looks like somebody's got the welcoming lights on in their caravan so let's see how we go with that so I was just going to pop that rather than having to worry about actually fitting it to the specific shape I've just cut a piece of yellow big enough to go across both and I'll just glue that on in place. I've gone a bit widespread with my glue there but anyway that's okay. I'll just dob it off the excess of there. So that's basically I think that was about three quarters of an inch wide and a couple of inches long just to fit in and behind without that mucking around and that's our little caravan there okay so we'll uh, keep going everyone's gone a wee bit quiet have I exhausted you with my talk of caravans and uh, pine trees okay so we're going to pop our little caravan on one of these little um, brackets that we've just made so what I'm going to do is pop the caravan on the back bracket so it sits towards the back of the card and I'm going to pop around it so it looks like it gives that beautiful sort of in the wilderness surrounded by trees feel. I'm going to actually pop the pine trees that I've made. Oh, sorry, I've already made six pine trees. And as I mentioned, the pine trees come in the detail and the outlines um, dies. So I've made six of them, so I popped it through twice. As you can see, I've already glued them together as well, um, just because it was a wee bit fiddly. Um, 
a wee bit fiddly um, and um, um, I didn't want to have to sort of bore you with that because it was ended up with glue everywhere and, and that's not a good look. Okay, so I'm going to pop this big tall tree up behind up behind so it looks even taller than it is so obviously it's uh, it's it's hiding some some lack behind there and I'm going to pop him there I'm going to pop this little guy here which is the second tallest tree I'm going to pop him just in behind so it's snuggling out the side there so together they look like they're sort of hiding the fact that this one is uh, cut off a, a wee bit and then this little got the little of the three I'm going to pop it in there just so it's sneaking its head over the top of the what have we called camper okay so it's a camper cool okay so I'm going to glue those as I mentioned going to glue those straight onto the caravan so I'm just going to pop some glue roughly where I think I need it and then pop the trees on behind it's just a wee bit of like false perspective, isn't it? Sort of making the viewer think they're seeing something that they're not necessarily seeing. Pop this little one here. Okay, looks like it's quite bushy already, quite foresty. And then this other little one here. And again, he looks a lot taller than he is because he's just sneaking over the top. So there it is at the back. No one's going to see that. They're going to see this cute little perspective here. Okay, so we've got that. Now, um, next bit, we actually want to attach it to our um, bracket. So I'm going to attach it to the bracket sort of so that the base of the caravan is in line with the top of the bracket. So a bit like that. You could trust that you've got only two tiny little um, sort of gluing points there, um, which is probably not going to um, be sturdy enough. So to solidify everything up, I use a piece of um, acetate and I have um, mentioned before how I make my acetate I, I do buy it for very special occasions but for stuff like this that no one's going to see I actually just run um, blank laminating sheets through my laminator and um, just create sort of quite nice thick sturdy um, thick sturdy um, acetate with uh, at a fraction of the cost um, so I'm going to pop that just with some glue, this little strip. I think it's about an inch wide. It doesn't really matter too much or whatever you're comfortable with. Popping it on the back of the card with some of our wonderful glue, which means I may have to hold it for a wee bit till it starts to solidify. And that sort of makes a caravan lollipop in a way. So I can use that to attach to my bracket. So I've got the back bracket. I'm going to pop that on there. Tuck the um, acetate behind so you don't see it. And then I'll glue that just like that. So you've got the acetate holding everything clear, um, firm. So I'll just work out where I want it to sit on the card so my little thing is going to go there I think I'm quite I think central is okay so I'm just going to go central there we are so I'm going to just let that set for a wee while with our little caravan there so as you can see that little bracket that little thing is going to now using the little tabs on either end I'm going to glue that inside the the box card and it's going to sit up like that isn't that cute that is the cutest thing love it 
I'm, as I say, just going to let that dry for a wee while and we'll look at the front. So I've got a second bracket and this one's going to sit at the front of the box. And I've got some other trees for that. I've got the middle sized one and the small one. Um, if you have a look at the original, I popped the middle size one on the, the one side and the small one on the other side. Husband loved it because it looked like the little caravan was all nestled in the woods. I didn't like it as much because I couldn't see the little towing tow bar for the caravan behind this tree. I think it was too nestled. So what I'm going to do is pop both trees over to the right hand, uh, left hand side and then I'll pop the little dog there in front of the caravan just so you can see that it's actually a caravan and not a like spherical house. Um, okay, so let's have a look at that. So I'm going to pop those on. I don't think I'm going to need acetate here because I'm just going to pop a tiny bit of glue at the bottom of the tree and actually attach it to directly to the to the bracket. So that's our first one. And as I say, I'm going to pop the little one just in front and slightly down a bit. A bit hard to see because I've got evening evergreen everywhere. But trust me, they're glued on. Okay, so it could end up that Stephen's right and they look better the other way. But hey, it's a bit of an experiment. Okay, so there is our front bracket with our two little Christmas trees there. Okay. Now we've got the little dog. So the little dog, I've already die cut the white piece of cardstock for the little dog. And here is the stamp that we use. It's from the, as I mentioned, the trees for sale uh, stamp set. He's just a plain little silhouette of a dog. There's nothing to him much. I don't think he's even got an eye. No, I don't think he does. It's just a, yeah, just a black dog. With time he's going to be a black dog. Maybe I could make him brown, but no, I think black's fine. It's like he's in the shadows almost. Just stamp him up. I would normally die, stamp him first and then die cut him, but I thought I'd get all my die cutting out of the way while I was over there before we started. And hopefully that won't backfire horribly on me. There he is. No, there's our little dog running around outside the campsite. There we are. He's going to pop on there as well. So I'm going to pop him on, as I say, over to the left-hand side of the front bracket so he just looks like, like he's running around in the trees. I might pop him on later when I've got the rest of the proportions right and I know I'm happy with it. Okay, so oh, there's one more tree. As I say, I cut six trees and that's the remaining big tree. So I, what I'm going to do is pop that on the very back. So it sort of looks like a third layer of of um, of, uh, of depth there. So I'm just going to pop that right on the back layer and I let it overhang slightly to the left um, just so it peeps out from behind the rest of, of our stuff that we've got happening. So there. So that's just straight on the back and slightly overlapping and that's okay because when we close this one up it'll tuck inside so we're going to close it up that way I wouldn't overlap anything on this side obviously because once it's closed it would be make the card too wide and it probably wouldn't get in the envelope but on that left hand side there because we're going to close it to the left we've got plenty of overlap you don't want to go too crazy obviously you don't want to make your card look lopsided but actually had a thought about this when I was doing it that we can bring in and I might do it in a second we can bring in some bling and make those trees look a bit festive or at least a couple of them so that they're out camping surrounded by Christmas trees okay so we're gonna I think that's dry enough oh, should be dry enough now I'll just be gentle with it again I'm gonna as I say I mentioned I bring I use my glue stick for this because it sticks quickly it sticks but doesn't dry so I'm just going to pop some um, glue stick on either side this is just a normal old Bostick whatever the brand is wherever you live glue stick that the kids would use at school 
move that down into the box, line it up where we want it. And then this is why the glue stick is handy because I now am going to make sure it's roughly straight. I sample fold it closed and the glue stick will stick solidly enough for me to, um, to have a bit of a play and make sure it's in the right spot. Whereas if I used our glue, it probably wouldn't stick that straight away sort of time. Anyway, it's as I say, I've made a lot of these over the few years that I had my Etsy store and it's a bit of trial and error there as to the best glue to use. So there we are, that's our first layer there. We've got a little caravan in those woods. As I say, this little one out to the left here makes it, completes that sort of look of, of being in the, in the bush. Okay, so we've got our front one here with our two little extra trees off to the left. Let's get my glue stick again. I did make the original card with my Stampin' Up glue, um, but I had to hold it for quite some time to before it actually stuck, which isn't good when you're doing a, a video. You really want things to happen straight away. So again, I've popped that little bracket into the card, get it sort of straight and close it down so it sticks both ways. Hopefully I haven't made that look too complicated. And there we are. So that's our little, I, I like that better actually. I like that. I'll have to show Steve and show him that, um, yeah, I think I'm right with that. I like those two little trees over to the left a bit more than hiding all of the caravan. Could probably even bring the caravan a little bit to the right to even get it out of those trees even a little bit more. But I think that's quite nice. It sort of looks like you're peeking at it through the through the trees. That's the original there where you can't quite see it. Our little puppy dog, I'll bring him in. Still sort of contemplating where he should go. I don't think he's going to take up too much space if I pop him just there off to the left-hand side of the scene. I had him right forward in the first one. He looked a bit too out of it. I'm going to pop him back one level and pop him there. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. He doesn't cover over as much as the tree. Just pop it on my glue stick. Just going to go back to our glue again. Just some little bit of glue on his two back legs. And pop him on there. Now he's going to, I'm going to have to either hold him or just hope for the best while he glues, while he um, sticks on. There we are. I'll just hope for the best while he sticks on there. And there he is. Obviously trying to wake his owners up or bring them out because he spotted a possum or, or something, who knows. And there's our little, um, our little scene. Okay. Hope you like that one. I think that's really cute. Not particularly Christmassy. You could give it to somebody who's retiring or, you know, going to head off as a grey nomad out into the great unknown somewhere. You know, you could do it as a retirement card. Or as I say, with, as a Christmas card, we've got the little Christmas accessories there you can use with your caravan. Um, and I said you could pop some um, some embellishments or some pearls or some baubles or something on those trees to give them a bit of a Christmas look. And actually in the die set as well, they have some streamers and, and bunting and stuff like that. So you could probably, you know, decorate it all up, make it a little bit more Christmassy. Uh, with the bunting and the and that sort of thing, but anyway, so that's that's my version of it there. Uh, sentiment is all we've got to go, and as I say, I've mentioned I've used the the die from or one of the dies from the All That Dies. Some awesome um, sentiment boxes. If you're looking, uh, you're in, in despair that you want some new sentiment boxes that you haven't um, you haven't seen in the other die sets. Um, the rectangular one I haven't put back in yet, but that's a rectangular, nice size re rectangle. I've got the sort of the more flourishy ones there, little sort of, oh, I did put it back. I just didn't put it back properly. Let's put it back properly. Yeah, where did that go there? Um, little um, arrow one there. A circle is very handy. I've used that several times 
plus a little oval, which we haven't had a little oval like that for so long as well. So even if you're not into the he's, uh, he's all that bundle, uh, I'd recommend that all that dyes for um, just for general dye um, sentiment uses. Okay, so I've got the little sentiment box there. I'm going to use, there wasn't anything in the stamp set that would fit. I suppose I could have um, masked off the Merry Christmas to get that on there. I could have done that, I suppose. But I do actually, I'm really loving the Brightest Glow um, sentiment um, sentiment stamp set for um, for the Christmas cards that I'm designing at the moment. Um, really, really nice sort of sentiments there. And I'm going to use Wishing You a Season of Light and Hope. So I am sort of making it a Christmas card. Mm, wherever that one is, Wishing You. Is that it? Yes. No, oh, hang on. Hoping Your Christmas. That's not it. Did I have it out already? I've got it out. I must have it out already. It's not there. It's not there. Oh, yes, I do. It's out already. So there it is. Um, Wishing you a season of light and hope. I'm going to use Evening Evergreen just to follow the theme of the card already. Evening Evergreen looks like it could do with a bit of a re-ink, but that's okay. I'll do that later. Lovely sentiment. Fits that box pretty much perfectly, like it had been designed for it. There we go, and I'll just pop that straight onto that little front flap there so it um, it sort of pops forward as in on, on display whenever the card is open. And I know from when I, as I say, keep going on about it, when I had my Etsy store, these are the sorts of cards that people like to keep. I think a lady sent me a picture after about a year she was trying to clean up her son's bedroom and he refused to let her throw the card away. So he kept it, which was really nice. So even though she expected it for nothing, um, it was treasured, which is a nice feeling to have. So anyway, so there we go. Wishing you a season of hope and light. And there we are. So we've got our little caravan tucked away in the trees, little dog running around happily outside and a nice box card as I say will fold flat like that and again you could add a black a blank panel of white cardstock on the back to get that to, to write your message on it does because it's um, longer it's longer at the top you do have a little overlap there that you've got to be careful of and that's why it goes into a six inch square envelope but there you go that's my card for you today I felt that I had to actually do one had to make it a bit bigger. The, the little caravan isn't so little. I thought it would be quite small, but it's actually the best part of three inches long. So that's why I had to make the card a little bit wider than my normal, just to fit it on and be able to do it justice with all the decorations around it. Um, cool. So that's that one. I have another idea, and I'm not going to do it for you now, but I'm going to show you where I'm heading. This is a spanner fold card that I've started. Didn't have quite time. I was started it this morning, and I didn't have time to continue, but I'll show you once it's done. Spanner fold. Um, what I'm going to do is using the same components as my little box card. I'm going to pop the trees on the outside on that acetate. And then what I thought I'd do is sponge some sky and some clouds maybe and some um, grass or something there pop the caravan inside there with the dog so that the trees pop up and away and then I'll pop the panel inside for um, for decor you know for the message and stuff so keep an eye out I'll pop that on my Facebook page when I finish it uh, at some stage today um, with the uh, with the finished box cards so there we are. That's my card for today. I hope you really like that. That those tree lot, that tree lot um, die cut. Even if you haven't got the um, uh, the trees for sale stamp set, as you can see, you use the trees in the caravan. You probably can get away without the stamp set pretty much. But it is quite a nice compliment. Um, there is a little uh, trees for sale sign there, which has got a die that you can use, and obviously the little dog needs to um needs to, you know you can use the die for the little dog um but yeah so yeah not a bad uh, celebration freebie i quite like that one as i say free with a 180 dollar australian 
uh, purchase through the online store. So um, watch for there's um, I've got links to my online store all over the place. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, taking orders at the moment for my He's the Man product class. If you're interested in that, I'm going to start cutting this afternoon. Now that my shoulder my shoulder was really sore, I had my booster shot yesterday uh, Sunday, and my shoulder's been sore for a few days, so I haven't managed to do any cutting. But I'm, I think it's better enough that I can start cutting them this afternoon. So um, jump on board with that one uh, as soon as you can. Uh, I think that's all I've got at the moment. Usual celebration, awesome specials, great time to buy, great time to host, great time to join. So let me know if you're interested in any of those as well. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, I will see you all again on Saturday. I'll we'll try and get back into my normal routine after next week. Would have come live yesterday, but as I say, my, my, soul, my shoulder was so sore, I just uh, couldn't quite manage it. But anyway, I will talk to you all again at the weekend.